Hello and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be looking at this GATE 2019 exam question, which is looking at this list of languages and figuring out which one of them is not a context-free language. So we have the set of all palindromes over a b star. We have this language, which is w a to the n, then the same string w reversed, then b to the n, where the exponent for the a and the b part is exactly the same. Then we have the language of a to the n, b to the i, where i is some multiple of n, either 1, 3, or 5 n. And finally, we have, similarly to the b question, where we have, instead of w reversed being between the a and the b part, we have the reverse part at the end, and the, and the a to the n, b to the n part in the middle. So which of them is not a context-free language? So pause the video and try to figure it out for yourself. So the answer is actually B. So B is not context-free and all of the others are context-free. Why are they all context-free? So let's look at A. So A is all the palindromes over the set AB. So, oh, actually AB star, but a uh, set of all palindromes, and not just e palindromes, but even length palindromes. Not that that's really important, but even length palindromes. Well, how can we make a grammar for this? Well, if we have a palindrome, it must start and end with the same character, and what's in the middle is also a palindrome. So if it starts and ends with an A, the part in the middle is a palindrome. And similarly, if we had a B starting it, the middle in the part, the middle of it is also a palindrome. Uh, I mean, an even length palindrome, but still. So how can we make a grammar for this? Think of it as we're starting at the base case. So what is the smallest possible string we can have here? Well, it's empty. So we can have S goes to empty. And then now think about the inductive cases, which are the two cases here. So we would have to generate an A, assuming that S generates even length palindromes. We go, we have S here and then A. And then similarly, we have the same thing for B. So you can show via induction that this does generate exactly the even length palindromes, which is the first language here. So A is context free. So let's skip over B for now. Let's go to C. So why is C context free? Well, it's the same thing as A to the N, B to the N, and at least zero, union A to the N, B to the three N, where N is at least zero, union A to the N, B to the five N, where N is at least zero. Because I could either be N, three N, or five N. Well, the first grammar, we can just do S goes to a, S, B, or empty. The second grammar, we can, well, actually I'll just call that S1 so that we can differentiate them. Then for the second one is S2, I'm gonna call the variable S2. And what does that make? Well, it's very similar, but instead of having one B, we're gonna generate three. So with every A, we're gonna generate three Bs, or empty, and similarly for the third one. So that'd be A, S, three, then five Bs or empty. So they're all context-free because we just made a grammar for them. And their context-free languages are closed under union because we just made a video about that. So we can confidently say that C is a CFL. Now, what about D? So I'm going to copy and paste D down so that we can see it for sure. So what is this? Uh, actually, I didn't copy everything. The end needs to be there. So what do we need to do here? Well, it's basically the same thing as the palindromes, but then at some random point, some point that we chose non-deterministically, then we go inside to the a to n to the b to the n part. So we're gonna generate some strings 
of the form W with W reversed on the end recursively go on the inside, and then at some point, we're going to switch over to a grammar for A to the N, B to the N. So it would be done like this. So it would be similar to the grammar that we did for part A, but without epsilon because we don't want to necessarily stop there. What we would want to do is just to generate the W and W reverse part on both ends. So remember that we're generating characters on the front and the end here, which correspond to the W on the front and W reverse on the back. And similarly for the B part. But then now we gotta switch gears and go over to another variable. And we do need another variable here um, because the A to the N, B to the N part is not of the form W, W reverse. So we do need a different variable for this. So A goes to now that will be generating the A, the N, B, the N part. So that's A, capital A, B, or epsilon. And this works because in order to get a string of terminals, we have to get from S down to the empty string epsilon right here. Well, the only way to do that is eventually S has to hit A at some point which means it's gonna be generating some string of the form W, W reverse on the front and the end. And then at some point, it comes to the variable A, which must make something of the form A to the N, B to the N, because that's what the grammar makes. So we can confidently say now that D is also a context-free language. So then now, becomes the interesting part. Why is part B not context-free, but part D is context-free? So let's talk about B. So why is B not context-free? It's mainly because the W and the W reverse parts, as well as the A to the N, B to the N parts, are split across, they're not next to each other. And so you may be thinking, okay, well, this grammar doesn't work that we just did, so therefore no grammar works, but that's not necessarily true. So what we can do is we can make the W string here, we can make it so long so that the A to the N part is really, really, really far away from the B to the N part. So how would we prove this? Well, we would have to use something like the pumping lemma. So how do we prove this? Well, I can't pick a string. Let's just say that P is the pumping length for this language, uh, assuming it is context-free. And we'll eventually disprove that, but we're just assuming it's context-free, then there must be a pumping length, P, for this language. Then, let's just say that we wanted to choose the string B, uh, with, uh, I should not pick uh, W here, let's just say the string S, and what I want it to be is uh, B to the P, A to the P, B to the P, B to the P. Well, let's see. Well, this might actually work, but the problem is that we have the same we have the same b to the p on both sides here. So, we may not be able to get a contradiction from this, but let's try it anyway. We may get be able to do it. So, remember the rules of the pumping lemma for context-free languages? we must split up the string into u, v, x, y, z, such that the length of v, x, y is at most p, the length of v, y together is at least one, so one of the two is not empty, and u, v to the i, x, y to the i, z is in that language L for all i at least zero. So what could happen here? Well, because the length of, of V, X, Y is at most P, and V and Y are the pumped pieces right here, then that means that it can't be possible for V to be in the first run of Bs right here, and for the Y part to be in this run of Bs or this run of Bs. 
So I'm actually going to shorten this string up b to the p, a to the p, b to the 2p. So let's see. So would this work? Well, let's just say that they are in one proportion. So let's see. So let's just say that the v and the y only are in the a's. So this is one possible way to decompose. We have to look at all possible decompositions. Well, if they're only in the A's right here, then if we change the number of A's, we the the matching set of B's, which is right here, would have would be different. And so it would leave the language for that reason. So pumping either direction leaves the language. So then let's just say that VY was in first set of Bs. That was horrible handwriting. Let's try it again. Set of Bs. The first set of Bs. Well then, if it's in the first set of Bs right here, and we change the number of Bs right here, well the number of Bs over here is not going to change because if it was only over here well it can't cross all these PAs anyway because and they're only in the B's in the first place so then that means that the number of B's will not match at the end if we pump in either direction and by either direction, I mean pump down to i equals 0 or, or i at least 2, either direction. So what if a vy was in uh, any of the other b's? So that means it's in either this run or this run. Well, if it's in this, in the third run right here, we have the same situation as the second situation. And if it was in this one, we would have the similar situation as the first one, because it's just the reverse. It was either in the A's or the B's, but pumping in either direction would leave the language. So this is similar to first and second cases. And if it had some of the third section and some of the fourth section, well, if we pump in either direction, both cases will fail. So therefore, we're, we leave the language in those cases. So then the other case might be if V in first set of Bs and, A, and Y in As. So that means that it's the Vs in this part the y's in this part. But if we pump up, we're not going to hit this run of b's at all because we're only in the first two sets. So this is similar to other cases as well. And these are all the decompositions, so therefore this language is not a context-free language. Because no matter how we decompose it according to the rules, we will always leave the language. Something will go wrong. Either we violate that the string w is not the same in both places, or the n for the a to the n, b to the n part is not the same. So we can confidently say right now that the, third, the second language is not context-free. So I'm going to write that in red. So this is not a context-free language. And the other three are context-free languages because we made a context-free grammar for them. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you found the answer a different way. As always, please like and subscribe to support the channel. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm right now. So I hope that was interesting. And as always, I'll see you next time.